How's it going everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Remember when I said July was going to be a big month for Halloween Horror Nights announcements and updates? Well, we are ending the month strong with Universal hosting a UK press event for HHN this year, revealing to us a bunch of details about all the original houses and two of the scare zones that were previously announced. We also got the debut of two brand new scare zones coming to the event, one at this press event and then one just on their socials. I do want to note before we jump into the information that there will be some spoilers for the original haunted houses as well as some of the scare zones for this year. I don't really consider them major spoilers because I don't think they're going to ruin the house for you, but if you're looking to avoid any kind of spoilers when it comes to Halloween Horror Nights 33, I recommend you skip this one. And also, if you notice my voice sounds a little nasally, I'm feeling a bit under the weather, I apologize. But I wanted to get this video out as soon as possible, talk about this news because this is really exciting here. So before we jump into this UK press event, I do want to talk about the two scare zones that were just revealed by Halloween Horror Nights themselves. The first one is called Duality of Fear. The description reads, as soon as you enter Halloween Horror Nights, you must choose a path, the visceral horror of sinister or the unearthly terror of surreal. For one, I love the color palette, the blue and the pink mixing together, and of course the looks we get at Sinister and Surreal. My guess is that Sinister is on the left, Surreal is on the right. On the left side here we have this character with a bright orange eye as well as red orange hair. Looks similar to the character we saw in the Torture Fair art, I'm just saying we're going to talk about Torture Fair a little later into the video. But on the right hand side we have this character that looks very cyber like maybe it's just me thinking that but the whole vibe of this artwork gives vanity ball from hhn 29 meets seek and destroy from hhn 30. outside of the artwork we got quite a bit of information from the description it mentions that this zone is going to be featured as soon as you enter halloween horror nights making me think this is our front of park scare zone and we also have the idea of choosing a path for this scare zone now up until 2023 the front of park scare zone was featured down illumination avenue where Despicable Me Minion Mayhem and Villain Con Minion Blast sit today. But last year with Dr. Oddfellow's collection of horror, of course, that was moved more in front of the Universal Studios store and Universe store on the corner of Minion Land and Hollywood. I say this to say I think we're going to be seeing the two sides of this scare zone, the visceral horror of Sinister and the unearthly terror of Surreal, take part on both streets connecting at this corner. But oh no, my friends, that was not the only scare zone that was announced today. We also got announced Demon Queen. The description reads, get caught in an otherworldly hellscape ripped from the darkest corners of your mind, where four merciless queens loyal to Surreal rule. Jumping to the art, it looks like we have silhouettes of Surreal as well as the four demon queens here. Getting very big dark zodiac vibes from this artwork looks very cosmic but also with some of the character design as well. Obviously with the connection to Surreal in this scare zone, I'm guessing that Surreal Surreal and Sinister are our two icons of this year, if not capital I icons, lowercase i icons, characters that are going to guide some of what's happening at the event this year. We obviously don't know the full details, I'm sure we'll get more later on, but I really love this connection and how they are kind of connecting the scare zones like they did last year. Makes me wonder if Sinister gets a scare zone as well. Very, very curious about all of this stuff regarding these scare zones. And now we have four of the five scare zones officially announced for the event. What do you think about both Duality of Fear and Demon Queens announced for Halloween Horror Nights this year? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. So as I mentioned before, Universal recently hosted this Halloween Horror Nights panel over in the UK, in which they revealed some more details surrounding the original houses and previously announced scare zones. I want to issue a big spoiler warning here. We are talking about some of what we're going to see inside of these haunted houses. Also, I want to say thank you to Darren Scott for creating this Twitter thread here with photos and details, breaking down what was shown at this presentation. We're going to be sticking to 
this thread pretty closely when it comes to photos and information, so I just want to say a big shout out to Darren Scott for creating this thread. And okay, let's kick it off with the new Halloween Horror Nights logo for this year. The big monster gate in the room is that we get another look at Otis with the sort of border around the HHN logo. I'm expecting to see this on some merchandise. Really love this look at Otis and really gets me thinking that they're going to utilize Otis at the event this year. Of course, we have Sinister and Surreal in the front of Park Scare Zone. Maybe that connects with Otis at the actual gate. Maybe we're actually going to see Otis brought to life at this event. But either way, we get him here in the logo as well as the new tagline, Where Horror Lives. Now, the first house we're going to talk about in detail, and the one that probably got the most amount of details according to this thread, is Slaughter Cinema 2. Of course, this is a sequel to the original Slaughter Cinema House, bringing eight new gory B movies to life. And in this photo here, we get a look at two of the movies featured in Slaughter Cinema. We have, of course, a new poster and mask for Heavy Metal Hell 3D. This movie was announced alongside the Slaughter Cinema announcement, so this is one we already knew about. Here we have a modified mask to the character we saw at Spooky Empire. Of course, we're going with the blue skull this time. And then we have this poster here, really cool artwork. I love that they're going all in creating these original movie posters for this year. And I see a pair of 3D glasses on the poster. Are we going to be getting some 3D glasses for this house? Are they going to go with the 3D adjacent style, really using the black lighting to create that 3D effect? Are we going to go true blue 3D like we did in the past? Very, very interesting stuff here. But what's also very interesting is the debut of a new movie coming to Slaughter Cinema 2, Mardi Gras Murders. Of course, you can see one of the masks here as well as the poster. I really love this poster here. And they said they're going to utilize some of the music from Universal's Mardi Gras celebrations, really creating that synergy between different events at the park. And speaking of synergy, we're also set to get a Christmas-themed movie in Slaughter Cinema too. So curious to see that one come to life. I'm really excited for Slaughter Cinema 2. The next house we're going to talk about here is Major Sweets Candy Factory. Two big new additions here. We get our first look at a brand new character for the haunted house known as Taffy. Taffy was revealed in the Discover Universal podcast for this house. So go check that out if you haven't already. It gives a lot of great detail as to what we're going to see in this haunted house this year. But we get a good look here at Taffy. Love this sort of grotesque yet kind of goofy goofy design we have here very much feels in line with the scare zone and with the tone of this haunted house and speaks to me that I think this house is going to be a little scarier than we're expecting it to be. We also get a picture of what looks to be the facade for this haunted house and seems to fall in line with the factory as we see it in the Major Suites logo. We have a couple new details here for the Museum Deadly Exhibits. We really just get a closer look at whatever artifact is going to be cursing the items in the museum. We have a poster here for the Rotting Stone, the new exhibit we are journeying into, and a card that looks to be explaining whatever this artifact is. It looks to be written in Latin. I'll try my best to translate what it reads here, but either way, really cool sort of story world building detail. This is another house that we don't really know a whole lot about, but honestly, I kind of want it that way. I feel like this could be a big surprise as a haunted house, so I'm excited to learn more about it, but I don't want to know too much, you know what I'm saying? Speaking of houses we don't know a whole lot about, let's talk about Goblin's Feast. We got revealed a couple of the masks that are going to be used in this haunted house, and they range from sort of cutesy looking goblins on the left to more aggressive scary ones on the right, but I love that we're kind of getting the variety of characters. They're not all going to look the same. Let me know in the comments below, who is your favorite out of these three? I'm going to have to pick the little guy on the left. I just love the face sculpt and the colors it looks like what you would expect a goblin to look like finally we got a little bit of a look at monstros the monsters of latin america love this new art design for this version of the house brings some stuff from hollywood puts la muerte at the center but also uses that orlando logo which i honestly like more than the hollywood one we get a little bit of a look here at la lechuza with the concept art we know from hollywood as well as what looks to be maybe a redesign for orlando's house this design 
does not really look like the one we saw in the Hollywood version, so maybe this is an all new version of the character. Let's us know we're gonna be getting some slight differences from the Hollywood house. Before we pivot to the scare zones, they did talk about Nightmare Fuel Nocturnal Circus. I talked about that in my last videos. There wasn't a whole lot of new information here. We get a little bit of a better look at some key art for this new show, as well as a frame that seems to resemble Otis. So again, maybe we're gonna be seeing this appear on some merchandise. I would love to see that. Not a lot to report from Nightmare Fuel Nocturnal Circus, but they did talk about it. I did want to mention it. It is coming to this year's event. And again, if you want more information on that, it's in my last video. Finally, they did reveal some details surrounding the previously announced scare zones. The first one up is Torture Fair. We have a few costumes here, what looks to be maybe a Grim Reaper of sorts on the left. Of course, we have the king and queen portrayed here, although I think the most interesting thing about this reveal is what's behind the characters. We have a look at a stage that has a bunch of medieval torture devices. You have an Iron Maiden there. You have what looks to be a basket of body parts. I don't know if that's something specific or just a basket of body parts, as well as two thrones there in the middle, I'm guessing for the king and queen to sit. But this is positioned in a very interesting alcove that if you look at the background is pretty familiar within the layout of the park. There's really only one scare zone location that has an alcove like this, and that is New York. So like how it was with Swamp of the Undead, where we saw those props going up that are pretty clearly tied to that zone, it looks like we are seeing the same thing happening here with Torture Fair in New York. Really curious, this is quite a big area, so lots for them to do here, and it just makes me more excited to see this Torture Fair brought to life. The final zone they talked about was Swamp of the Undead. Now this one is the most far along when it comes to the scare zones this year. And looking at this set piece photo, this is pretty close to what we're seeing in the park right now. You have the crashed boats, you have the swamp shack, and you have the trusses which are connected by moss. I'm expecting that moss to go up pretty soon. Another thing we got revealed here were some of the masks for the zone, and these look pretty freaky. Anyone who's expecting this to maybe be a little bit of a goofy zone, Zone or something a little more lighthearted, I think you're in for a shock. I think this is going to be one of our scarier scare zones this year. Central Park always has a way of making a scare zone feel more intense just because of the lighting and the space. So pair that with some freaky looking characters as we see here, and we're in for a pretty scary one this year. Now, I did mention that Swamp of the Undead was the final scare zone to get details at this press event, but I am incorrect as there have been some details revealed for Demon Queens, the scare zone I talked about earlier in the video. We get a better look at the characters themselves and we can tell that Surreal is there in the middle, the head looks the same from the duality of fear concept art, so we know that that is Surreal, the other one is Sinister. Definitely some wild costumes all around, again getting very big dark zodiac vibes, mix in a little bit of dueling dragons too a little bit. But we also see a little set piece in the back which looks absolutely incredible, gives me very big like Hades underworld vibes. It makes me question where this scare zone is going to go. We think Duality of Fear is going to be in the front. Swamp of the Undead looks to be in Central Park, and as we mentioned earlier, Torture Fair looks to be in New York. That leaves San Francisco and Hollywood, and based on this set piece and what we're seeing in San Francisco right now, I'm pretty confident that this scare zone is going to be in the Hollywood section of the park. Considering that the mega movie parade is going on, they're not going to be able to put too many big set pieces out in Hollywood that they can't roll in and out. So this looks like the perfect set piece to be built backstage and brought out on a night to night basis. I really love this closer look at the Demon Queen's scare zone. This is one I am really curious and interested in, and I'm definitely curious to see what other set pieces this brings with it. And that's it when it comes to a announcements. Quite a bit revealed when it comes to the original houses as well as the scare zones for this year. Let me know down in the comments below what excites you the most out of the things I've talked about in this video. I won't lie to you and say this morning has been a bit chaotic with news, with updates. So I want to say thank you for your patience with this video. I know my voiceover might not be as good as it normally is. I want to say again, big shout out to Darren Scott for providing this thread here of all this information. And big shout out to you for getting us to 3,000 subscribers. This is such a big milestone. This was my milestone for all of 2024. And we're not even out of July and we've already hit it, which that's so insane to me. So thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart. But if you're not already one of the 3,000 subscribers, 
subscribers watching this video, you like this video, you want to see more, be sure to let me know by leaving a like and subscribing to the channel. My guess is we're going to get some more information with Midsummer Scream coming up this weekend, so there will be videos talking about all that. Stay tuned to the channel because we're going to break all of it down. But until then, I want to thank you all for watching this video. Stay spooky and take care, everybody.